All right, so after we have created histograms to explore the shape of our of our data and also we have changed the size of those little uh, dots, each one of them representing one school in, in Miami-Dade. Remember the height of these bars, it basically represents the, the amount of the schools, each one of the dots are representing one school. After we do that, we are going to keep exploring our data further. So I'm going to, after changing, after using, remember that before we used the add to plot feature that allows us to change the appearance of the plot. After you have changed that, you can click on close down here and you will go back to the main, uh, to the main window. Now, you can see that uh, Insight lets you bring more data, more variables here, okay? Right now, we are just visualizing one variable, reading 2012. We are exploring the shape of the data, right? The shape of the data. We could do that with any variable, by the way. So, for instance, we could see, before I proceed, let me show you something else. Let's suppose that, for instance, you want to see the amount of schools uh, that in which the percent of students who read well increased or decreased. What you could do is to create this kind of a dot plot histogram using reading difference. So I'm going to just drag reading difference down here to where reading 2012 currently is. So I'm going to just drag and drop that variable over here. And what I will get is the same kind of plot. Oops, I'm going to just do that again. So I'm going to just drag and drop this variable and drop it on reading 2012. Okay, because that will update. Oops, for some reason it's not letting me do that. Just try to do it again. My, my computer is running a little bit slowly uh, today for some reason. I wish there's some one menu over here. This is a new feature probably. Oh, there you go. This is easier. Instead of dragging and dropping, I'm going to just, this is a, new, a feature that I didn't notice before, but it's actually quite useful. So I'm just going to click on that and select reading difference. So if you click on reading difference, you will get uh, automatically uh, a dot plot hist slash histogram that will show you you know, in how many school in how many schools that number didn't change? How many schools the percent of students who read well decreased, and how many in how many schools the percent of students increased? Okay, in some schools that percentage increased by almost by more than thirty percent, as you can see. This is the increase, the percent increase, the reading difference between two thousand and twelve and two thousand and thirteen. That's another potential story, right? So, you know, you could see you see these schools over here in which that percentage increased so drastically you may be led to think, well, why this happened? Again, visualization is not just a mean, is not a means for to answering questions. It may be a means to ask more questions from the data or ask more questions to your sources because you could go to a source uh, that knows a lot about this data set and ask him or her these questions. What is going on in these schools? Or you could go to those schools and see what's, got, what's happening, right? Anyway, so what I was about to explain is that uh, you can also visualize relationships between variables. So let's suppose, for instance, and this is something, by the way, that I described in the in the prologue of the Truthful Art. Let me open Acrobat again and open that file that uh, I showed you before, uh, the uh, the Truthful Art, uh, Truthful Art first pages. So these are the first pages of my book. Remember that you can download this from free for free. Uh, from my website, thefunctionalart.com, as I explained in a pre previous video. So in the preface, I explained that another thing that I did just for fun was to create a graphic that allowed me to uh, see the relationship between percent of the students who can read well and percent of the students who can do math well. So that's actually quite easy in Insight, okay? The only thing that we need to do is uh, go to the console here in Insight. I'm going to open this drop down, drop, uh, 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 drop down menu. And here I'm going to put, um, let's say, uh, percent of students who could do math well, so math 2013, and then it automatically will show me the distribution. And then down here on the second variable, I'm going to plot the percent of students who could read well in 2013. And automatically, inside will detect that what we are trying to do is to see the relationship between percent of students who could do math well and percent of students who could read well. As you can notice, the reading percentage is put on the x-axis and the math percentage is put on the y-axis. If you want that to be different, for example, if you want math to be on the x-axis, we will need to switch these variables, okay? So for instance, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to put reading here, and then I'm going to go here and put math here, and automatically the math will be on the x-axis and reading will be on the y-axis. Not that it doesn't, not, not that it does, a that makes a huge difference over here, right? The relationship is actually quite clear, right? 
the more students or the larger the percent of students who could read who could do math well the larger the percent of students who could also read well remember that each one of these dots represents one school in miami date okay as you can see there are many schools in which zero percent of students uh, could do math properly this may be you know missing data or it could be a mistake in the data this is another thing visualization is useful for it may let you visualize a dubious data or or, or or things that may look you know that that may look wrong and then may need to be corrected perhaps this is these schools are uh, schools in which that percentage was not recorded or it could be right it could be that in these schools no student uh, can do math correctly all right it's actually one school here in which zero percent of students uh, can read and zero percent non-students can do math at the appropriate level. So immediately we can see that there is a relationship over here, a linear relationship in statistics. This is called a correlation, the correlation between those two quantitative variables. One thing that we could do, by the way, is to overlay a trend line. Okay, so this is something that I didn't do in this exercise over here, but it is I did it in, an, in other chapters of the book. In some cases, the relationship between two variables is actually quite clear. We can see that there's almost an invisible line that goes across the center of these dots, right? The more students do math well, the more students read well, right? So it's, it's linear, the relationship is linear. But in other cases, the relationship may not be linear, okay? So in, in some cases, the, the data is so messy that it's interesting to ask the software to plot a line that shows us the direction of the relationship. How to do that in Insight? We will need to go to the Add Plot a, 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 a menu item down here. So I'm going to click on Add Plot. And then on I, the I want to menu, I am going to click on that and select Add Trend curves. Okay, I'm going to click on that. And as you can see, there are many trend curves that we could use. The simplest one is linear. Okay, so I'm going to click on that, click on linear, and automatically the software will add this line over here showing us the direction of the relationship is up and forward to the right, meaning the more do math well, the more or the further to the right a school is, the further up that school will tend to be as well. This is some sort of predictive model, right? Now, as, as I mentioned before, in some cases, relationships between two quantitative variables are linear, going up, going down, going to the right or going to the left, okay? But in some cases, that relationship may not be linear, in which case a linear model or a linear trend curve may not be appropriate. So what I would encourage you to do when you play with software tools like Insight and many others that let you do the same, that also work based on the R programming language is to is to try different linear tr different trend curves rather than using just linear try for example to add a smoother which will be a, like a curve okay now as you can the curve that has been overlaid is the magenta line that you see over here you will see that it's not a perfect it's not a perfect straight line it om it is almost a perfect straight line just because the relationship between the two variables is so strong that it becomes almost linear the second smooth line uh, that we added afterwards is almost straight as well. But it, it may not be straight. There may be cases in which this magenta line will look like a curve, going down and then going up, etc. So it's always interesting to play around a little bit with all these options. In this case, perhaps the, the linear curve will be appropriate. We could also try a cubic line. It's also uh, like, a, like a smooth curve. Or then draw a smoother. Okay, the, uh, there's just an option here. A, to change a, several properties of the line, but I, I, as you can see, it's almost a, it's, it's a good description of the relationship between the two variables. The more students do math well, the more students uh, can read well, and each one of the dots being a school in the system.